Hello everyone, this is the North American Math Contest Go Go Go. This week we are going to talk about what to prepare 24 hours uh, before the exam and during the exam. Before the exam. We are going to talk about before the exam. Before the exam, I encourage you to not prepare for the MC10 and just sleep. Do some sleep so that you will be energetic during the exam. If you have the exam at the afternoon, AMC 10 at the afternoon, I strongly encourage you to, uh, to be feel relaxed and do not do some, uh, do not do some do many sports during the morning, so that you will be prepared and feel energized during the exam. So, and remember to have lots of water and food ready, but don't eat too much before the exam, the, the MC10. Okay. So this is the general, the general strategies to, for you to prepare before the exam. These are not important. And what is important is the thing during the exam. During the exam, A common strategy that you need to do is to first identify your goals. Like, do you want to be top 5% or distinguished honor roll or the honor roll or a uh, distinction? After you have identified these goals, you can start. Um, you can start looking at the problems. You can just spend three minutes, go over all the problems, two or three minutes, but not too long, to to estimate the the cutoff score, to estimate the easiness of the problems in order to identify the cutoff scores of this. For example, this year, uh, when I see the problems, I know that it I have to score at least one hundred plus points in order to be safe to qualify to Amy. So that I set up my strategy, which is getting the 16th problems right, 15 problem right, and leave 10 unanswered. So that I will have a score of 105, which is getting me pretty safe to the Amy. So if you, you can make up a strategy of only answering 15 or 16 problems and spend the time double checking the problems to see that they are definitely right. Uh, for the distinction and distinguish for the distinction I encourage you to use the same way. Um how do you estimate since the distinction only starts the award for two years, before the 2019 there's only distinguished honor roll and Amy qualify. Now there are three, which is Distinguished Honor Roll, Distinction, which is around 2.5-ish, and MC Qualify, which is around, Amy Qualify, which is three, around 3.3 to 4%. For the Distinction, a common way of, call, if you wish to aim for Distinction, a common way of estimating it is the this qualifying score plus 10 to 15%. 15 points. Usually, this is accurate enough for you to get the distinction. This can definitely ensure that you get distinction, I mean. So you can just write to a score of 120 plus-ish and leave the rest of the time um, trying to double check the problem to see that they are right. For the distinguished honor rule, I don't quite suggest you to use the above method. You you need to do try to f solve every problem possible in order to get a distinguished honor rule. If you try to aim that, two keep you in a steady keeping a steady place during an exam. Steady pace. Sometimes you may see the problem that is difficult and you can't solve it. 
To do that, you need to, I mean, when at the start of the competition, you need to uh, just go over the problems to see that about which problems you are good at. So that when you, so that during the exam, you might stuck in several problems. At this time, you can just jump to other problems and try to solve them. Remember that you need to spend several minutes on one problem. If you can't do that, you can skip to the next problem. So uh, only if in two conditions, I suggest you to skip the problem and get to next one. First, you try several minutes you try several minutes already, and second, after you try several minutes, you still don't have an idea. So I suggest you to skip the problem. I remember during the exam, there is a problem that I quite don't have an idea. That, But after the exam, I find this problem re relatively easy, which is 2 plus 3 mc 10a problem 10. 2 squared plus 3 squared, 2 cubed plus 3, 2 to the power of 4 plus 3 to the power of 4. At that time, I'm trying to combine them in a group like this, but it doesn't help me to solve it. So therefore, I skip to that problem and keep my pace tight. And you need to keep be keep reminded of your the time, the remaining time, because sometimes people might too, uh, concentrate too much on one problem and uh, ignore the time. Uh, therefore, you might, if you forget to, if you ignore the time, you might spend 20 or 30 minutes directly on one problem. This is also possible. Not impossible. Also possible. Recall that, recall that no matter in a, in a virtual contest or reality, virtual contest, or offline contest of MC10 time the time you finish the problem won't be considered at all so therefore if you participate in MC10 virtually and we assume that A, finish the problem at 4 minutes 32, finish our problem at 72, 35, and B, finish the problem at 74, 1, 3. It does not be, mean that A has, A ranks higher than B in the AMC contest. So this won't happen. So, so I suggest you to spend every minute and don't Finish MC10 early. Okay. Spend time double checking. So this is uh, play with the strategy. We have talked about um to use the to you to not answer problems that you don't know. Now we are going to talk about guessing. The guessing you can use guessing when you have answers of two to three candidates. Here I'm going to introduce some, some of the guessing techniques. First of all, there is no preference of choices. A to E for MC10. So, for, so this means that the people who make AMC won't prefer to, uh, to have most problem on one choice. They won't have ten problem choice on one choice. They instead they will ensure that every choice is equal. So this means that they will ensure that every choice has about five to six problems as the correct answer. 1.2. If an answer is too far different compared to the rest, then this answer, this choice is definitely not the correct choice. So make an example. A to B3C4D5. 
E5000. You can definitely find that the E is often not the correct answer here. 1.3. If there's a choice where A is less than B is less than C is less than D is less than 5, the numerical value, then usually E is not the correct answer because if you have a correct answer of E, then people are more likely to get the correct answer. Because, for example, if during a debashing problem, there are five choices, right? If the choice is, is E, and people find that they get an answer over E, like, for example, they find 10 of them or 11 of them, then they will definitely estimate that E is right. E is usually. Remember, it is usually, not always. There's some exceptions, but for the most of the time, I agree, for the 99% of the time, this statement is true. 1.4. A, B, C, D, E. Let's assume there's a choice A, B, C, D, E. The, simp the simplest choice is usually also not correct. For example, given given these five choices, usually A is not correct. Because A is much simple compared to this, 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 this. And 1.5 is the... is a uh, guessing by characteristic. So let's assume that there are three choices. The three choices characteristic. The first one has characteristic A, B. The second one has characteristic A, C. The third choice has the characteristic Like this. Usually the choice is AC is correct. Like the choice is that is containing both two characteristics. Because this one has two choices. This one has two choices. MAA will definitely uh, give you complex. MAA will definitely try to confuse you during the exam. That's how, that's how people make mathematic problems. They were usually trying to let you think to the last minute. Some general strategy of guessing. So, and finally, for some problems, some and finally for some combinatorics problem. Um, if there if the choices seem less, for example, if there's only two, three, C, four, E, five, for combinatorial choices, if this has a smaller number, then I prefer you to use the bashing strategy instead of counting. An example is the P twenty one. You are required to find all the scanning and descending numbers of the... To solve this problem, the choices are pretty small. Even the largest choices only has 36. Therefore, the easiest way here to use is bashing. Bashing will help you to get the most correctly answer. Here are some general strategies for you to get AMC. And finally, congrats to the people who qualify to the AMI. You are already the top 4% of people.
people among all participants. So in an exam, you really like in a AMC 10A or 10B or 12A or 12B, in usually in a division, there's around 25,000 people. And if you get top 4%, you are already the top 1,000 people among this. So you are already the top 4% of people among all the participants. Congrats! And after you qualify to the USMO, you are already the top 0.5 people among all the contestants. Again, congrats. Here we come to the end of our uh, AMC strategy lesson, and I hope you have learned a lot. See you next week. Bye!